what up welcome i am cologne 2022 predictions let's go so we have the playoff bracket uh literally starting today in a few hours and i thought and by i thought i mean someone asked me to do a quick prediction video um let's get straight into it looking at the first quarter final we've got mouse taking on astralis so let's have a little look at their um, journey so far. Obviously, Mouse went down to the lower bracket immediately in their group, but then they had a pretty good run through the lower bracket. I would say beating some pretty decent teams. Um, Heroic obviously had uh, Yabby in the lineup first tournament with him, but it's still no joke. Heroic is still um, going to be a decent team to play. I didn't get any point, even if they do have a new man in the roster. And it's not like they had no practice time with Yabby. They did have some practice time. I expect Heroic will be better moving forwards, but nonetheless, this is still a pretty good win for Maus. Um, Vitality, obviously looking pretty decent in general at the moment. I think Zewu is playing closer to his best than he has for a little while now. Uh, and then obviously beating NIP, who I, I'm not still not sure about. Um, they're a weird team, NIP. They're hard to predict. They seem to have a pretty decent ceiling, but also their floor is kind of low. I think they can kind of suck sometimes. And that's what got them through to the quarterfinals. Mouse's run has kind of been characterized by like everybody pitching in. Bemus, Frozen, Torzy, JDC have all had good games, uh, good maps, good series here and there. Um, I think JDC topped this series. Yep. Oh. Um, you know, Frozen, I think, has been their most consistent star player, but everybody's had like a, a series or a um a map or two where they've they've done really well. Uh, and I think Dexter has called some really, really fantastic T sides as well. I've been really impressed with Dexter's calling, actually. He is the guy, if I'm being brutally honest, I've not been sure about on Mouse because I think three of their players, Torzy, Beamer, and Frozen, are definitely very good and definitely very talented and I think can be part of a top 10 team for sure. Um, JDC plays a role and has been playing... I think growing into the team. So, you know, no problems with JDC either. I think Dexter was the guy I was, uh, Dexter, not Dexter, um, is the guy I was worried about. I was worried about his calling, whether he was good enough, but he's called uh, fantastically throughout this event. So definitely impressed with Miles. And then as for Astralis, they um, actually made just an upper bracket run. They beat Furia 2-0, they beat Cloud9 2-0, obviously lost to FaZe, but were reasonably competitive in the series. It wasn't too bad. This one I think is pretty hard to call because it's two teams that I think have massively underwhelmed throughout the year um, and then suddenly seem to have hit their stride at this point. I think it makes sense. They both seem to have made tweaks to their systems, which has definitely brought about some positive changes. Um, I think Astralis, for me, the big thing that's improved has been their T sides. Their T sides have been woeful for the majority of this year and there has been a absolutely massive improvement in their t sides um you know it's something crazy like 10 percent or something their round win percentages increased on on t side um what do i expect from this game that's actually kind of hard um you know we'll just go to the match page and have a look it's kind of hard um to predict i think config and blame f have probably both hit higher peaks than maybe anyone on the mouse lineup this year um, particularly Blame F. Blame F has probably been the third best player this year so far behind uh, Simple and Zewu. Um, maybe even the second best player this year so far, you could say, behind Simple. Blame F has been humongous. Uh, hum as you can see here, massive impact, massive damage, um, incredible rating. Blame F has been a fucking superstar this year. And, you know, all people talk about Bait F. It's a load of shite. The guy has huge impact. The guy has been pretty much carrying Astralis so far this year. But with the tweaks, it looks like Config's come into his own. Zipex is playing better now than he has for a while. I would say on firepower, Mao's probably have a little bit more spread firepower. Like they kind of have four players who can put like 1.2 rated series, you know, up for sure. Um, whereas Astralis kind of have their firepower focused in Config and Blame F. I think, you know, you're going to struggle to see Zip, Glaive or Farley hit the levels of like Torsi Frozen or B Mass particularly with any regularity at all. So I think the firepower, the peak firepower on an individual player goes to Astralis for sure. But the the kind of overall firepower, like the strength in depth on that front probably goes to Mouse. Um I think what we're gonna see here is 
it will probably come down to who can put up the better CT sides. Both of these teams have put together good T sides. And I think that's basically a defining factor of a lot of the teams that made the quarterfinals was that their T sides were better than the average. And in a meta where it's so CT heavy right now on every map except Inferno, it's really important to be able to put together those effective T sides and get enough T side rounds that you don't have to shut people out on CT. And then where does that come? I think Astralis's T sides have been predicated more on their individuals, whereas I think Mao's have had a little bit better cooling probably on their T sides from what I have seen. The map pool is going to be interesting. They both play all of the maps. Obviously, Astralis' Vertigo is not very good and not a map they particularly want to play. Uh, Maus don't really want to play Dust 2. So you'll probably see a Dust 2 ban from Maus and a Vertigo ban from Astralis. And then outside of that, there isn't, I think, a clear advantage that any team can really get on any of the maps. I know Astralis' Nuke is probably better than Maus's, but... I think this is slightly misleading. Mouse have played a few more maps. Mouse are willing to play Nuke basically into anyone, even the best Nuke teams. So, and then obviously the other big um, gap is here on Ancient. But Astralis for a while were kind of trying to make Ancient their pick. Um, I think they've maybe gotten to the point where they might go away from it a little bit and it's not going to be so much their home map anymore. So I don't really see a clear advantage that anyone can get in the veto. Maybe Mao's pick Ancient, and I could see that being something of an advantage. If the veto was something like Ancient Nuke and then, I don't know, Overpass or whatever as a decider, or Mirage even, or Inferno, like whatever the decider is, I'd probably give Mao's a slight edge in the veto. Astralis, uh, the only time they've played recently is in back in 2021, you know, with different lineups, so this doesn't mean shit. I would probably give the edge ever so slightly to Maus. Um, I think I have a little bit more faith in Dexter's Dexter's calling. I always it always sounds like Dexter when I say it. Dexter's calling, and I think if the veto goes the way I potentially expect, I think Maus will have a slight edge. But I think this one is probably very up in the air and very fifty fifty. I think if Blame F and Config have really good games, then it's going to give Astralis a very good chance, but I have to probably give it like 55, 45 to Maus. Ever so slight advantage because I think they can get a slight advantage in the veto and they have a little bit more depth or strength in depth in terms of firepower. And so you're less reliant on one or two people having a good game. You can, you know, expect or hope for a good map out of all of your players, really. Even Dexter's had one map where he fragged pretty well so far at this event. I can't remember what it was. So I'm going to give Maus a very slight advantage in that one. We'll look at the semi-final as well. Um, being brutally honest, whoever gets into that semi-final is going to be a heavy underdog. I'm talking like 70-30 underdog at least, maybe even more so. The one thing I see with Na'Vi is I think their map pool is yet to be fully fleshed out with Electronic as the leader. I have seen some wobbly Infernos from Na'Vi. I'm not convinced their Inferno with Electronic at the helm is necessarily good enough to play in a top tier event against a top tier team. Could they maybe get away with Inferno against Maus or Astralis? Maybe. Maybe they could, um, but I would definitely be a little bit worried about Na'Vi's Inferno should that come through the veto. Um, let's let's have a look at the... Uh, is it going to give us... No, it won't give us their map stats, obviously, because it compares them. Um, but yeah, be, if we're being brutally honest, you have to take Na'Vi in this semi-final. No matter who goes through, I think it's, it's going to be, you know, Na'Vi heavy favoured to take this semi-final. Um, who do I think has a better chance if they do get through to that semi-final? Probably Maus, because they've already taken a map off Na'Vi so far this event. They ran Na'Vi pretty close in both of the maps. Maus had a 9-6 lead on Nuke going into their CT side against Na'Vi. They probably might feel like they could have closed that series out in two, that they had a real chance. When you're nine, when you put a 9-6 T half on Nuke, you know, you're one map up already in the series. You've got to be feeling really good. Um, and so I would say Maus, just because of that group stage game, they're the team I would expect to maybe have a slightly better chance against Na'Vi. But I think it's neither here nor there between Maus. I give Maus a slight advantage to make it through to the semis. And then I think Na'Vi will make the grand final. 
Um, looking at this Movistar Riders versus Liquid, again, we'll have a little look at the runs um, so far. Movistar Riders just marched through the upper bracket. G2 pretty convincingly. Vitality pretty convincingly overall. Um, Vertigo aside, they got squished on that Vertigo, but then they squished Vitality on Mirage. Uh, and then they took... Um, a map off Na'Vi, a convincing Inferno. They outclassed Na'Vi on Inferno. They were by far the better team and then couldn't get it done. Obviously, on the latter map, simple, you know, going absolutely thermonuclear. Um, it was as simple as even incredibly good on Inferno. It's just bit and SDY particularly had a bit of a stinker. Uh, and as you can see in general across the series, they weren't that great. And then as for Liquid, they had to make the lower bracket run, but they did beat some decent teams. They beat uh, Cloud9, obviously recently won IEM Dallas, one of the better teams in the world. Shira and Axile are playing like superstar level this year. And then they beat Furia, who, you know, Furia can always give you a, a tough game. Their style is confrontational and combative and is always going to, it's always going to take work for you to beat Furia, right? They're never going to roll over. Um and as you can see, it was a very, very close series for Liquid. Um, losing Spirit here, whatever. Patsy had a great game and Spirit are a good team. Um, a little bit more time to bed in Wonderful. And I think Spirit, maybe they won't be as good as the Degster version, but they can definitely be like a top 10, top 15 type team, I think, this Spirit lineup. The most impressive thing with Liquid has obviously been the revival of Elige. Yekindar coming in and taking the aggressive roles has allowed Lee Elige to flourish once again. Um, for Movistar Riders, it's kind of been Mopoz and Sunpius uh, mostly. Uh, you know, Sunpius obviously having some incredible series. Mopoz leading the way here. Uh, and Mopoz was very good again in this series against Na'Vi. Um, Mopoz is also a very aggressive player. Um, he's their kind of aggressive lurk on T side. He's normally up in people's faces on CT. He wants to to take fights early, get those opening kills. And Movistar Riders have some of the best opening kill stats on CT side, particularly at this event. As for Liquid, they don't really stand out as a team in any category. Like statistically, it's not like their team is top of the opening kills or anything, CT, T, whatever. Um, it's mainly just been a liege powering them through these games. And then you have a great supporting cast like Yekinda obviously can do this, have an insane peak. We know Yekinda is an incredible player, one of the best in the world. OC has been very good at times and we know Naf can be very good. So this is probably going to be, I think, a very, very interesting quarterfinal. And I think this is really tough to call. Liquid have more firepower. Straight up, Liquid have more firepower. Mopoz and Sunpius are great for Movistar Riders. Alex is, is, as you can see, not bad either. But I think Death and Davy G, it's a big drop-off from these three in terms of just raw fragging potential down to Death and Davy G. Obviously, Davy G basically has all the shit rolls. Death's, is, um, Death's rolls aren't quite as bad. He normally um, anchors the, the big site. He normally anchors A or whatever, um, which is not a bad position to get kills from on CT. And then on T side, he kind of is a bit of a like utility man. I don't literally mean utility in terms of flashbangs and stuff, although he does often, um, he is often the guy throwing flashbangs and shit for his entry fraggers. Um, but as in, he tends to, it looks like fill in gaps more on T side, like he'll lurk if they need a lurk and Mopoz is with the pack. And, you know, sometimes he'll, he'll lead the way and, and be uh, like a front man. But yeah, I think Liquid do definitely have the firepower for sure. Like we've seen even Nitro, since he's come back and have like huge games um and look i mean the the, the stats kind of bear that out like you know elise and naf already have like you know way better stats than the top two oc is better than mopoz yekinda like if you just go man for man the stats are way better on liquid admittedly some of these stats are i don't know in the past three months actually maybe it's not so much farming na qualifiers and stuff but i do give the firepower edge over to liquid that's for sure in terms of quality of play and calling and, and stuff like that, I think the Movistar Riders T sides have been so good and I expect their T sides to be better than Liquid's. However, Liquid C T sides are very, very strong, um, as are Movistar Riders. It's, it's really hard to call. So if we open the match page, we'll have a little look at the veto and maybe that will give us um, a little bit more information. Obviously, Movistar Riders don't play Dust 2, Liquid don't play Nuke. Those will be the bans. That hurts for Movistar Riders because Nuke is their best map. So having that band out against you immediately at the start of the veto is rough because it is also by far their best map. Their Vertigo is pretty good. They're pretty decent on all the others. I think Overpass, they're a bit easy to read, particularly on T side. I think that's Movistar's biggest problem is they're 
their T sides are normally quite good, but on overpass, I think it's too readable. The way they play is very, very methodical, very standard. Um, and I think it's too easy to read. Whereas Liquid have more places they can go, really. They'd favor themselves on Mirage. They're going to favor themselves on Ancient. They're going to be fine with Vertigo if it goes there. They'll probably feel better on Overpass. I expect Liquid to pick probably Mirage or Ancient. Liquid are one of those teams who will pick Ancient and they will start on T side and they'll 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 try it. They'll see what they can do. Um, I would probably pick Mirage. Movistar have shown a vast improvement on Mirage. They didn't really play Mirage um, before, um, I would say like last year and stuff. Uh, and then Mirage was pretty atrocious. It's improved hugely, but still, I think if I'm Liquid, I'm probably picking Mirage. I also think when you've got the firepower advantage, a map like Mirage is probably the place to go. If the VO is something like, let's say, Mirage, um, I, I think Movistar will pick Inferno if they get the chance. And then a decider of like Vertigo or Ancient or Overpass, whatever the decider is. I, I'd probably give an ever so slight veto advantage to Liquid again. Again, I think this is a very 50-50. I think it's hard to call because Movistar Riders are on such a tear. At the moment, they've obviously been very, very good recently. They won the recent ESL Challenger event. Until they lost to Na'Vi, they were on an eight-game winning streak. Liquid have the Yekindar factor. They have that new team smell. Oh, got to love the new team smell. And, oh, man, this one's really tough. I, I think I'm going to actually split this one right down the middle as a 50-50. I'm going to put my faith. I think this is what we'll go with. I know it's a different lineup because obviously Movistar, uh, sorry, Liquid have got Yekindar, but I'm going to have to use something because I really do think this one is like truly a 50-50 in my head. I'm going to have to give an edge to Movistar based on recent form and based on this that they won the last <gasps> matchup between, they actually lost Inferno. Interesting. But yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised if this ended up being like the the kind of maps we got again so so yeah i will give the slight edge to movistar and i will say movistar are going to play phase in the semi-final similar sort of thing here phase will be heavy favorites um i can't see anybody either of these teams beating phase should it come to it my only Slight trepidation with that is that FaZe have kind of been wobbly recently. Maybe they'll just disappear. Maybe the confidence won't be as great for FaZe. I think Movistar will come in uber confident. And Movistar haven't played FaZe in two years, right? Movistar haven't played FaZe in two years. Since 2020. That's got to favor the underdog, I feel like. I feel like unknown quantities is going to favor the underdog. Um, a lack of familiarity is probably going to favor the underdog. They're going to have a little bit more of the element of surprise. And when a team is better than you on paper, you probably want that element of surprise. You want that element of unpredictability more so if you are the underdog. Because if everybody knows, you know, let's say FaZe are just the better team. If they've played 100 times in the past month, FaZe is going to be heavily favoured if they go into a game because it's like, we know what Movistar do, they can't surprise us. Movistar's aggression, particularly on CT side, which I think caught out Na'Vi a lot on Inferno, is not going to catch you out if if you have played them a lot. So I would say out of these two semis, I think if Movistar made it, they would have a slightly better chance of beating FaZe than Mauser Astralis would have of beating Na'Vi. But I think we'll see a FaZe Na'Vi grand final and... I think it's so, so, so hard to predict what happens in this grand final. I would give the edge to Na'Vi. I would give the edge to Na'Vi if it was best of three, for sure. I think best of five because I'm not as convinced by Na'Vi's map pool at the moment and they will probably have to play Inferno. Uh, it does make me question. And it, again, I, it, these um, playoffs are incredibly open in the sense of i think anyone can win the quarterfinals i don't think that for the semi-finals but i think when the final runs around i think either navi or phase could win it 
for sure. For sure. Um, the best of five makes me give FaZe a slight edge because I think their map pool is going to be more solid than Na'Vi's. I think the mental edge goes to Na'Vi because obviously at Blast, they 32 to 7. That was the score across the series, was it? Yeah, I think so. Check that, but it's about that. Um, they got beaten like 16-2 and 16-5. They got absolutely smashed FaZe, got smashed at Blast by Na'Vi. Um, and so... That's got to be playing in the back of your mind. It, it doesn't matter how you know mentally strong you are, um, whether you can reset or stuff. It will be there in your subconscious. So again, I think this grand final is a 50-50. I'm going to take FaZe um, because I, I have to take the, the team that's been more consistent over the start of the year. And I have to take the team that I believe has the edge in a best of five. I think best of five is so important versus best of three. Um, and I think you have to take the team that you think the best of five favors because it's such a potentially long series because you play five maps and your map pool has to be on point. I've got to take phase in the grand final. So I'm expecting to see Mouse uh, get through to the semifinals. We'll have a Navi Mouse semi. Navi will win it, go to the grand final. Marvy Star will beat Liquid, play against FaZe in the semi-finals. FaZe will win it. And then I think we will have a FaZe victory. And FaZe will put a seal on it, put a little bow on it, put the rubber stamp on it. The first part of 2022 will belong to FaZe. Let me know if you enjoyed the video, guys. You know the drill. Like it. Notifications if you haven't. Subscribe if you haven't. If you've gotten this far and you're not subscribed, what the fuck is wrong with you? Sort yourself out. And if you didn't like it, I just don't care. I really don't.